Pastor Vic and Sister Rose are out on vacation, so we pray for them. But we come here today in the name of Jesus, gathered in your name, and we know you're here in our midst. We put our trust, our confidence in you. We come here for the express purpose of meeting with you and with your people, but we want you, Lord, to have your way in our individual lives. We want you to have your way, Lord, in what we say and do and be worshiped and be praised to the highest. So lead the worship team in the word of God and everything said and done today through Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, Jesus, I say it. 
in this church, in Lacombe. Be that person. Seek that out in your heart, in your, in your devotion time with Him in the mornings, in the evenings. Don't let that time be robbed. You have to guard it. You have to guard it. Speak to you. He will believe that. Chosen, I am loved. I am prized. 
bring water from the rocks to satisfy my thirst, to love me at my worst. And even when I don't remember, you remind me of my worth. I don't trust my ways, I'm trading in my thoughts. I lay down everything Cause you're all that I want I've landed on my knees This is the cup you have for me and Even when it don't make sense I'm gonna let you see me
I just got to say, we have to open up that access from heaven to earth and the power that he gives us through the Holy Spirit. We have to tap into that power. And I think, at least I know with me, it can be like something so foreign, like, could this really be? Could we really have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead to live within us? We have that access. We have to allow it. We have to open up the door and the gateway. And then we have to move in it. We got to walk in that. I mean, there, that's, there's power in that. And so I just want to say right now, open up your heart. Just tell the Lord, I open it up to you. Have access. Have your way. L allow that spirit to flow through you, in you. Receive that spirit, the spirit of the living God. And I also wanted to say also with this song and how it says, I don't want to follow my own way. I'm done chasing feelings. How many of us get in our feelings? We feel these things and we go and we act and we do based on these feelings that we have. That's when we need to tap into the power so that we don't run into those, those feelings and wind up bringing destruction. We have to say, no, that's not from God. And you got to call it out like it is. It's not from God. And he'll give you the strength to get through. Thank you, Lord, that you give us that access. Thank you, God. We don't have to walk just blindly and aimlessly.
God, I thank you for your presence in this place this morning. Thank you for what you're doing in this place. There's peace in his presence, right? Man. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you, God, for this resting place. For this watering hole in the desert. Thank you that we can come in and be filled so that we could go out and bring your life and your love to this world. Thank you for filling us this morning. If we walk in empty, there's no reason to walk away empty. Be filled. Thank you, Lord, for everything you're going to do this morning through the message and through our fellowship. God, I just know that you've been moving and I know that you're going to keep moving. I just ask that nothing we do would inhibit that. We love you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. One more thought to that incredible worship service. 
God has no limit in his power. God has no limit in his love and what he will do in each of us. The only limit is what we put on him. So that really means that we have the greatest power source that ever was, ever will be at our disposal. We can just reach to him at any time, call on the name of Jesus at any time, and the enemy cannot overthrow us. He cannot even hinder us. Just call on the name of Jesus. It's already done. Thank you, Jesus. Is he, is he in this place today, church? Woo! Wow. Incredible. Incredible. And whatever it is, that you need to tell him whatever it is he wants to hear it he's just waiting it can be fear it can be sickness it doesn't matter he can handle it amen he can handle it it's so comforting to know he never leaves us nor forsakes us well, let's go ahead and dismiss our children to their classes and say a blessing on them and the children and, and the teachers. Please, Lord, bless the children and the teachers. Give us the love and the patience, but lead us by your Spirit so that they would grow up to know you as close to you as they can be throughout their entire life. Thank you, Jesus. Well, welcome to Living Word Church. As you can see, Pastor Vic and Sister Rose are out of town. They're at the beach. And we pray a blessing on them at the beach. We want them to be restored and strong. And we have with us Pastor Jim White. How many of y'all remember Pastor Jim White? Y'all welcome him and his wonderful wife, Rebecca. I think this is the third time he's coming to speak here. And he was actually scheduled to another third time, but then... Something came up. God has it all arranged for today. So I just want to mention a few things. We have membership classes that are starting the first three weeks of June. Sign up is right out in the foyer. And our Wednesday night service, going really good. And Pastor Jim will be back Wednesday night. Is that right, brother? So don't miss Wednesday night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's take a minute and prepare for our offering and give to God. What an incredible opportunity that he gives to us that we can give back to him. Lord, we can never repay you. Even through our actions, through anything we do financially, we can't possibly repay you. But Lord, we sure want to try. Give us the leading, give us the courage, the anointing to do your will here on earth, to further your work. And that's your purpose. That's why you came. That's why you died for us and for those that don't know you. So that we would pour back into your work to glorify you. And thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Hallelujah. All right. You hear me? All right. Hey, uh, this is what an honor. Thank you so much for inviting me. I tell you, I had such a great time. Last time I was here, you've been in Rebecca and my hearts. We love you. We think about you often. Um, I know Pastor Vic really well, and we talk about you a lot. And he tells me a lot of wonderful things are going on here. So I'm very excited to be back with you again. Um, this is ju just wonderful. Um, and I want to thank my wife, Rebecca, for her support. I tell you, it is a blessing to have a good wife. And I tell you what, she's the speaker in the house. You ever he hear her speak? Oh, my goodness, she is wonderful. Um, 
So it is an honor. I just want to, I just want to start. Uh, let's just invite the Holy Spirit to be with us right now, okay? Holy Spirit, just fill this place right now. From every seat, every person, just fall upon them, Lord. Touch their hearts. Lord, just fall upon us. Anoint us all. Lord, let your healing power go forth. Lord, if anyone here needs a healing, put your hand up. Holy Spirit, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We can do nothing without you. You are the power. We give you glory. And Lord, touch these people. By your stripes, we are healed. On the cross, Jesus not only took your sins, he took your infirmities. Holy Spirit, touch these that are sick. Lord, we beg you, please, touch them, heal them. Jesus, holy name, Holy Spirit, touch them. We claim your word. We just ask that you would make them whole, as Jesus did when he walked the earth. He touched many, and they were made well. So, Lord, make your people well. In Jesus' name. Also, any of you have relationship problems? Lord God, I pray right now that the Holy Spirit would move among, among you and that you would heal relationship issues. Husbands and wives, children and parents, co-workers, Lord, heal. Bring your love, bring your spirit of healing upon those relationships. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So be with us as we share your word. We thank you so much for this opportunity. All right, I'm going to share... On Luke 15, verse 1. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So the Pharisees were complaining to Jesus, as they usually did. And they said, Something's wrong. You know, he's just with sinners, tax collectors. You know, they weren't happy with this. That's not the way they acted. But you see, Jesus is in the people business. The Pharisees weren't in the people business. Many years ago, say, I think it was around um, early 2000, Rebecca and I, we went to Disney World. I think at had a business conference. And... We got the opportunity to bring out two little boys, Joshua and Christian. Christian was about five. Joshua was seven. Oh, you know how excited they were? Go to Disney World. Oh, it was a great time. Oh, we spent most of our time in Magic Kingdom. And, you know, they have the Peter Pan ride. Oh, they love that. Dumbo, the flying elephant. It was great. Winnie the Pooh, you know, the spinning teacups. All that stuff. We had a great time. But Christian's favorite ride, he loved this ride. He wanted to ride it over and over and over. It was Goofy's Barn House. <laughs> now, you know, back in the old days, uh, they used to have the pilots that they would put on shows, you know, and um, they'd fly through barns, you know, as part of the show. So they called them the Barn Housers. So it was kind of on that theme. You know, it was a flying thing, and then you wound up, the uh, ride, it's a roller coaster, you go through a barn. Well, <clears throat> Christian loved it so much, we kept going on and on and on, you know. And then about the middle of the third time, Christian received the call of nature. Now, there's not a lot you can do in the middle of the roller coaster. So, so nature took its course, and we now have a very wet Christian. Now, we don't know exactly what to do. We're in a dilemma. Should we leave? 
hey, you know, it's early in the morning. It's not too many people. Hate to leave. It's going to take a long time to then get back. You know, so we spot a, sh uh, a little Disney shop. We go in there, and um, we start picking out clothes. Now, we're frantic because Disney clothes is not cheap, you know? So we need shorts. We need shirt. We need underwear. We need socks. <laughs> so, you know, just a few items. You know, we got $100 worth of stuff. So we, what, what do we do? So we decide to buy it. The cash... Uh, the clerk at the cash register. He saw our frantic state and saw we were a little disheveled. And he said, what's wrong? And we told him the story. And he said, oh, Mickey just sent me a message on the cash register. He told me I should give you these clothes. Oh, my goodness. I've never experienced anything like it. Disney's in the people business. Can I, you know, as a business consultant and a businessman, can you imagine that model where you give your people the opportunity to have compassion on someone? Yes, yeah, it's, it's rare. It's rare that you experience that. You know, now Disney, they realize that if they make you feel special, if they make you feel unique, if they make you feel like you're the only person in the park, they can charge premium prices and you'll come back and you'll be willing to pay it, you know? They're in the people business. They train their people well to be in the people business. You know, but Jesus is in the people business. He is in the people business. This church is in the people business. And Jesus cares for each and every one of you. Now, we're going to go through Luke 15. Now, in order to answer the Pharisees, why do you hang with these sinners? Jesus told three stories. The first one was about the lost sheep. And these might be familiar to you. Now, the lost sheep, uh, the shepherd had 100 sheep. He lost one. Now, he left the 99 to find the one. And when he found the one, he put it on his neck. He put that sheep on his neck, and they had a celebration. They had a party. It says that heaven has a party every time someone lost is found. The second story was the woman and the ten coins. Again, she loses a coin. She only has 10 coins. And when I read about it, it's probably her dowry. So this is very important. You know, you lose one-tenth of your dowry. Well, that's one-tenth less uh, good person you're going to have eligible for marriage. You know, So it's very important to her to find that lost coin. So they search for it, and they find it. Again, big party, big celebration. The third story... We're going to go into a little bit more detail. But it's similar. Again, someone's lost, this time a person. And there's some similarities. And the first similarity is everything in the stories are precious. Everything in those stories are valuable. God looks at you as valuable. He sees you as precious. Not just collectively, but he sees each and every one of you as necessary for his kingdom. You are unique. No one in the history of the world has your DNA. When you were in the womb, God crafted your fingerprints, your thumbprint. They're all different. So it's not a collective love. God loves you. He loves you. He loves the unique you. And without you, there's something missing in the kingdom. Each one of you is a prize piece 
to God when he created you and what he had in mind. He's got the hairs of your head numbered. And you are precious. You are precious to Jesus. Now that's the first message that he wanted to convey to the Pharisees, how precious each person was. Now, there's another message he wants to tell them, and it's how to love. He's going to tell them, he's going to show them a positive example, and he's going to show them how not to love. So let's get into the story a little bit. But the first base is that each one of you is precious in the sight of God. So let's, let's read the prodigal son. We'll get a little background. I want to really focus on the older brother. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. Now, this is unusual. Young men don't usually ask for their inheritance at that age. The father grants it. So he divided to, and get this, and remember this word, them. He divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. He lived wastefully. And not only that, but when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself. Joined himself. That word has the, the message of he was persistently pursuing somebody. Please put me to work. So he joined himself to someone, to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the field to feed swine. So now a young Jewish boy feeding swine, that's about as bad as it gets. You know, that's a, they can't eat that. That's a, a banned meat, and he has to feed the swine. Not only that, he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So again, like the other two stories, this is the most precious cargo or a feature of his story. We had a sheep, we had a coin, and we have a human, a person, someone crafted by God. God loves him. And the, the young man said, I'll go home. Hey, at least I can be hired there. You know, I'm not worthy to be a son anymore. But he came to his father, and he was still a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion, and he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in your sight I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But what does the father do? The father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put the ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. He's given his sonship back. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is now found. And they began to be merry. All right. So all three stories have two things in common and one thing not in common. Two things in common. Precious. They feature something very precious, something valuable. Second thing is, is a great celebration. All three stories have a great celebration. But there's one difference in this story to the others. And that difference is 
The shepherd searches for the lost sheep. The woman searched for the coin. But the father couldn't search for the son. See, we're different. We have a free will. He couldn't search for you. He wanted to. He saw the son when he was a long way off. That tells me that he was on the porch every night, looking at that road, waiting for his son. His eyes were not off that son, wherever he was. In his heart, he was looking for him. He was just waiting for him to come down that road. And then he leaps on his neck. He hugs him. He's so happy to find him back home. So this is, again, remember the, the context. He's answering the Pharisees. Why do you hang with those people? Jesus is in the people business. Now, he gives a little rebuke to the Pharisees because just imagine that uh, he's talking to the Pharisees and he talks about the older brother. Let's, let's see what happens with the older brother. This is verse 25. And now the older son was in the field. And he came and he drew near to the house. He heard music and dancing. Have you ever heard dancing? That's really good dancing, you know, making a lot of noise. He heard dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come. And because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. Ah, all right. So what's the brother's reaction going to be? Is he going to be like the father? I'm glad to see you. Hey, welcome home. Good, good to see you again. But no, this is what he says. He says, but he was angry. And that angry word there, that's not like an immediate thing. The Greek there is, this is a steaming, simmering anger that's been going on for a long time. You see? It's like, hey, I'm here. I'm doing the work. My brother's off having a good time. You know, and so day after day, this gets him. And then his father is looking for the, young, the uh, younger son to come home. You know, he knows this. He sees it. He can feel the father's pain as he wants that younger son to come home. So he is angry. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to the father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I... Is the first never. I never transgress your commandment at any time. Now, let's look at that statement. There's only one son that's ever not transgressed the father, <laughs> and that's Jesus Christ. <laughs> so he is deceived or he's lying. There's every son in the history of the world, have disobeyed their father. So I have never, no, he is deceiving himself. He is wrong. And more, more uh, it, it's a, a prideful thing. Like, look what I've done. I've served you. Look at my works. I've done all of these things. You know, I, so you should just respect me for what I've done not recognizing what the father provides at home and, you know, all the food and everything else, you know. all the, So <clears throat> he is in a prideful state. Here's the second never. And you never gave me a young goat. Now, this is in contrast to the fatted calf, of course. You never even gave me a young goat. Remember, up in the first verses of the story, it said, remember that word? My 
I'll review it with you. This is the younger son. Father, give me the, um, the portion of the goods that falls to me. So he divided to them. In the Jewish law, the older son got two times what the younger son got. So he is greedy. He don't even remember. He got two times what the younger son got. So he's looking through greed and comparing himself with his younger brother. And it's false what he's saying. <clears throat> but as soon as that son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf. So no recognition that his brother who was dead is now alive, no celebration. He's now full of envy, jealousy, and he's selfish looking at himself. I'd like to do an illustration, if you don't mind. I, I love this uh, scripture in comparison to Matthew 17, 31, when Jesus also was talking to the Pharisees. I, I need a volunteer. I'm going to ask, um, how about Dahl? I just learned your name. So can, why don't you come on up here for a second, if you don't mind. Help me out. Come on up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mr. Dahl, thank you so much for coming, helping me out. All right. Now, face them. Now, <clears throat> you're going to be a balance scale. Oh, great. All right. So, if you would, put your hands out. Put your hands out. All right. Now, this is a balance scale. You kind of got me. You know, they, they hang things on this one. This one goes down, that one goes up. All right? This one goes up. Okay, so that's where a balance scale works. All right. Now, <clears throat> Jesus said to the Pharisees, love your neighbor as yourself. All right, so this is what's going on here. Remember, we're in the people business. We have to be witnesses. We have to be people. All right, so the older son says, turn your hand around, I'm going to put this in your hand. All right, he got more than me. You loved him more than me. <laughs> I'm better than him. There you go. Now. On the scale of love, where should he be? It should be easy, balanced, right? We love others as ourselves. This is the position of pride. He's looking down on the other person. He's comparing himself with the other person. And this is the Pharisees. This is what the Pharisees were doing. They were the religious leaders. They were supposed to be helping people. They were supposed to be in the people business. But they were prideful. This is the pride position. When you're looking down on others, I'm better. I did more. Thank you. Thank you, Dal. That was a pleasure. <laughs> Appreciate it. God bless. <laughs> All right. All right. Good job, Mr. Dahl. Appreciate you. So I want you to know that you're in the people business. Every one of you. Acts 1.8 says, I have given you power to be my witness. So we're in the people business. So I want you to look at your life right now. Is there anybody you're looking down on? Is there anybody you're saying, yeah, I'm better than them? You might not say it out loud, or, but are you thinking it? I want you to know you're in the people business. 
God's word is your trainer, not Disney. So you have to be in the business of loving people to such an extent that they see a difference. Whenever you're making a comparison, that person is a sinner. Oh, I've been in a church 20 years. I'm pretty good. That's not love. That's pride. Whenever you're angry with someone, you're putting yourself as the judge over that person. Whenever you look at somebody else and say, God, you gave them more gifts than me, you're comparing. Whenever you get in the comparison, it's a problem. So we need to be people, uh, people persons. We need to love as God loved. We need to be his witness so that we can make a difference. So I implore all of you to remember that. If you start making comparisons with anybody else, your wife, your, your husband, your children even, you know, you, you put yourself in a position of pride. In my opinion, pride is worse than hate. It's the opposite of love. So I pray that we can become people, persons that have the power of the Holy Spirit in them that can attract many, many, many to this place. In Jesus' name. Now, I want to go back to the first point. You are precious. You know, so many of us, we, you know, we get these little voices. You're no good. You, get, you ever get that voice? You can't do that. You, you, you can never do that. You're no, you're no good. You are precious. When you repented and came to the Lord, when the Lord made you, he said, you are good. And you are back to that state. You are good. Don't let anyone, any voice ever tell you you can't do it if the Lord calls you to do it. But you are precious. Every one of you is needed in the plan of God. If any of you are away from home, when I say home, away from church, away from the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, just think of that picture of the Father. He's on the porch. You are precious. He's hoping that you would come home. He's pleading that you would come home. If any of you need to come home, I'm going to ask right now that you just slip up your hand. If there's anyone that feels the Holy Spirit tugging on their heart to come home, Please don't disappoint him. The Father's looking at you. You are unique. You're needed. All right. I'll assume that all of you are home. Hallelujah for that. That's big. All right. Well, the last, let's complete. We did the whole chapter 15 of Luke. You know that? Let's, let's complete it. There's one more sentence. This is how the father answered the older son. And he said to him, son, you are always with me. And all that I have is yours. And that's what we have. Every one of us, we're home. You have the presence. And you have the provision of God. So with that, you come into play. I'll pray. <laughs> I'm finished. And I'm ahead of time. It's not 11.30. So gonna... <laughs> yes. Nailed it. <clears throat> Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You're so kind to me and, and Rebecca. We appreciate, we appreciate you so much. It, it, re it truly was an honor to uh, share God's word. So I just pray that the Holy Spirit just 
settles with each one of you, that you have his presence right now, the whole week. The presence of God will fill you with that peace. And that the word will settle in your heart. Holy Spirit, enlighten that that's important to each individual here in your word. We are precious. We are unique in your eyes. Lord, reveal how much you love each one here. And Lord, change hearts. Teach us to love better. Teach us to love like you loved, unselfishly. Lord, pour your love in the hearts of all these people. And give them the power of the Holy Spirit that they can be your witness to those who are away from home, those who are not home, those that the Father is just yearning. Come home. Come home. Lord, give us the the courage, the power, the words to speak to those people. Invite them home. Lord, protect everyone in their family. Holy Spirit, protect them, be with them. Give them your wisdom and your knowledge as they go forth this week to confront all the issues of the day. Lord, you're our shield. You're our protector. So protect everyone here and their families from all harm, from the evil one. Lord, you're our provider. Lord, bless all these people. Give them their daily bread this week. Lord, give them a heart to love you more and more and more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, everyone is dismissed. Have a good Sunday.